Welcome back to Marion's World and in today's video I'm going to show you how I'm going to take a piece of painted fabric, some green lining, an old skirt and turn it into this. So I hope you enjoy watching. Today I'm going to be at long last stitching my sister's Christmas present which actually is a representation of Joey. Um, I was my mum and dad's parrot and then when they passed away Wendy inherited him and had him for quite a while but because she works full time uh, she couldn't keep him and he nearly got stolen a couple of times because he mainly lived outside and he never flew away. I'll tell you more of the story during the stitching but he's now in a parrot sanctuary where he lives outside in a flock of parrots and is as natural as he can be in the UK. I'm six months behind being able to make her Christmas present, but today is the start of it. So I'm just going to put Joey's picture there and show you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be hooping up because that's the sort of embroidery that I'm doing today. And I've got various fabrics that I've culled from all over the place. I've got my beautiful piece of painted tablecloth that I'm going to use as a background. I'll put in there so you can see it. Uh, there's the feather colour. The main fabric I've got is this beautiful green lining fabric and then pieces of eco dyed fabric that maybe some of this I feel might be good for his beak because his beak is sort of black and yellowy brown and I felt that they were actually quite good colours for it so it may be that I'm cutting pieces out of here for his beak. So the first things first is to decide on a size hoop up and I'm going to cut out the shape of him so I can get a sense of him on the fabric. I've just been trying to find some likely threads from the tangle because it's a good way of using them up. So I know I need some greens. I've got a yellow there because I need to get him uh, hooked down first. I think that green might be quite nice especially when it's got that orangey bit on. And so what I've done, I've got the picture here, I've just um, divided the bird into three separate pieces uh, just with what's going. So I'm just I'm going to try and explain so that you could do it yourself with your own bird or animal or what have you. So I feel as if the head is the one piece the body shape is another good piece which is here and then the tail is a third piece and so that's what I've done I've just cut them out actually I think I want the body to be on top of the head so I'm just going to alter that you probably won't see the transition eventually but I like to do it the way I like to do it I'm going to keep the reference photo here so I can keep looking. As I always say, you need to be looking. When you're doing this type of thing, observing is half of the, the method of stitching, really. You, you need to be just looking all the time. I'm using this pale green. I'm going to use one thread. I brought you in closer so that you can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to come up in on the fabric that I'm putting down. And I'm just going to lay some tacking stitches in. But it's important that they go in the same direction as the lie of the feathers would be. So when I look at the photograph, the feathers are all lying like that, sort of going off that way. I need to make all my stitches go that way too. And then whatever I embroider on the top of them, it won't matter because they'll be lying in the correct direction. I'm just going to go around this bit of lining which is being a bit fraying but that'll be fine. So I won't be bothered whether these stitches get seen or not. Drop my needle. Oh. I've tacked Joey right round with that those little tiny strands of thread and I've just put this blue which there's three strands of this sort of a petrol blue. I've marked his eye just so I can keep a sense of where everything is and I'm just going to be putting some little horizontal straight stitches in here just to give the sense of the ends of his feathers which were blue underneath. And I'm just going to dot them about 
the smaller as they get closer to his eye and a little bit larger as I see his neck ruffle. And I'm just looking at the, the reference photo all the time just to keep a sense of it. These types of things are as much observation as they are stitching. And you'll hear me all the time saying he about Joey, but he actually was a girl. Um, he, my mum and dad got him when he was very young uh, from a couple who had got a new baby, who'd had a new baby, and Joey started to mimic the baby's cry. And then after the baby sort of grew up a little bit and wasn't crying so much, Joey continued and was crying like a baby all the time. And it, I think it drove them mad. So Joey sort of was rescued to my mum and dad. And he actually lived, although he had a cage in the sitting room where he went to sleep on a night, he mainly lived out in the garden because my mum had a big garden she was out there most of the time doing gardening and Joey was free to roam where he wanted. He didn't really fly very much. He used to walk all over the lawn. He used to climb up the trees and occasionally he used to get stuck up a tree and my mum would have to put a stick up, hold a, hold a stick above her head so that he could walk onto the stick and then she would get him down. And so he did learn to say more things and he did have his little repertoire of stuff that he said. And of course everybody referred to him as a boy because everybody thought he was a boy until the day. He sort of didn't look very well and my mum was a bit worried about him as to what was happening. And lo and behold, Joey laid an egg. So of course... They then realised, well, that's why he's not talking as much, because I think male birds are the ones that are the good talkers. Um, but forever after, we couldn't sort of get the hang of thinking, him, thinking of him as a girl, and so we referred to him as a, as a girl, as a boy, for the, rest of his, for the rest of the time we had him. Um, and so, sadly, after my mum passed away, the only person that was able to take Joey was Wendy and so Wendy had him at her house. The thing was that Joey was used to being outside, he was used to having his freedom and although Wendy could definitely give him his freedom in her garden, she works full time and although she could leave him out in the garden there were a few occasions where he nearly got stolen because people just couldn't believe that a parrot could be just out in a garden and People tried to climb on a garage roof to get him. The, um, she got people shouting over the thing that there was an escaped parrot and people wanted to call the police or the RSPCA because they thought he was an escaped from somewhere. But he wasn't. He knew where he lived and even when he was at Wendy's, he never tried to fly away. He knew where his home was. And he used to, you know, if she went in the house after she'd been gardening, he used to just walk down to the back door and knock on the knock on the windowsill of the, the window of the back of the house for her to let him in. And so he did have a lovely life doing that. But after the third time that Wendy caught people trying to get in her garden to get him, it sort of became evident that really it wasn't, she wasn't retired like my mum and dad. She wasn't there all the time to make sure he was all right. And we also thought that he was getting a bit lonely because he didn't have anybody to talk to all day. Um, and so the decision sort of got made that maybe he'd be better off at a rescue or a sanctuary. And after a while, uh, we found a parrot sanctuary and approached them about him and explained the situation and they were absolutely marvellous and uh, we eventually went to the parrot sanctuary to see them and took him down with us and he, he is there now, of course he's a, he's a female um, at, at the sanctuary, the, the parrots and all the other birds that are there uh, they're allowed to live their life as naturally as possible. They live outside, they have inside places they can go if it's cold, they can live in big family groups so they flock together and as natural a life as they can possibly have 
uh, considering they're in the UK, they get. And so it was the best outcome for Joey, who now has company of his own kind, could possibly have a mate and could possibly have had chicks of her own, which would be marvellous to think about. But Wendy definitely misses having him around. And so I did say that I would embroider uh, Joey's portrait for her. And unfortunately, this is the first time I've sort of, I've only just got around to doing it. And here it is in June. So that's very, I'm very, a bad sister really for waiting this long. But it started and you're going to see him come to life. I'll just finish that on the top. Quite often on these stitchings, it's easier for me to run underneath in between the two pieces of fabric and finish on the top. It saves me having to turn the hoop over. So I've laid those first stitches in. I can see that there's a bit of yellow at the nape of his neck. So I'm just going to use this little piece of yellow pearl cotton that was in the tangle. And I'll put a few stitches in for the nape of his neck. I'm going to put some yellow. I think this is the perfect colour. Just sort of got a yellow marking here. I don't feel it needs a fabric patch. It just needs the stitches putting in the right place. So I hope this is going to just come out perfect. And um Give Wendy a lovely picture to put on her wall to remember to remember him by. Now this fabric is fraying quite a bit, but actually it's working to my advantage because it's going to look very feathery. So I'm quite pleased about that. I think all of the stitches I'll be using today will be straight stitches. There's no need to do any other stitch on this type of bird collage. Everything that needs to be done can be done with straight stitches. And so for somebody who is just starting out, I think it's not too bad of a project. Because if you, as long as you've got a reference photo that you can work from, you just need to put your straight stitches in the right place. And you do that by observing all the time your your source photo or your source picture. Look, I've just put that in a it's got a got a nut on. There we go. You look at your source picture all the time and just put your stitches in appropriately. I think I think I've got those two yeah, little yellow patches in quite nicely. I'm going to use this nice olive green from my tangle. I think that's a good colour. And I'll use two in my needle. I'll just move round a bit. It's actually sunny today. It's been pouring down, but the sun's come out. Of course the sun's come out. It's tea time. So, you know, the sun's come underneath the clouds. I have been looking forward to stitching him. I just, there was so much other projects going on. It just didn't get done. To make some quite lengthy stitches here. Because it's his long tail feathers, I don't want it to look too short. So nice long stitches will work really well. I'm going to leave a gap and do ones for the other side and then the fabric that is showing will look like the vein up the middle of the feather. Another feather coming down there. I'd like some shading down here. I'm going to make it quite sparse because I'm not sure that I've got this thread anymore. So I'm going to just sprinkle it around in the hopes that if I don't find the same shade, 
it won't look like too much of a transition. I'll put that vein right down like that. Down that feather, right down to the bottom. And I'm going to come up this feather here and put the vein in on that one too. And then all of a sudden I'll get a sense of the feathers coming along. Not really taking note of individual feathers, I'm just going for the, the look of it. And there I am out of that thread, I will finish it off. And I'm going to choose another colour to do the bottom of here. I've come down to do the bottoms of these feathers and they're sort of a lime green and I don't actually have the right colour. But I do have these two. There's this sort of a greeny yellow and then there's this bright green. So what I've decided to do is put one strand of each in my needle. I'm going to lay some diagonal stitches in going up the feather I don't need to do them too close together because I want them to look you know shaded but I am going to keep that dark mid rib showing I'm just going to go up as far as I need to go They're just straight stitches laid, I've caught my needle there, laid in the correct sort of a plane, just the way I can see the feathers looking. I'll stop there and I'll come down the other side of the feather to the bottom. I keep pulling my needle out today. So I'll do that again, I'll fill my needle with one strand of each and I'll do each of these bottom feathers. I've got the feathers in quite like I like them. I actually changed and got a, um, an emerald for putting the darkness on because I thought it wasn't the, a dark shadow, it was actually a change of feather colour. And I've also changed to just one strand of stranded um, and I've been enjoying putting it in with one strand instead of two which is more what I would normally do. So I've got up to here I've got this piece loose at the moment because there are some extra feathers that come out under there and I thought it would be nice to actually put them on separately. So I'm just going to put these little feathers underneath and I've just cut them out from the little scraps of you can see there's not really even a shape there in a way. They're just little scraps of fabric that are going to look like feathers by the time I put the stitching on them. There's another one there. I think I've got... I think that's wider there. I'm not even bothered about the frayness of it. Oh, I just put them in, just tuck them under the edge of the body. And when I get them into the correct place, uh, so I now have got one strand of that yellow in my needle, this sort of greenish yellow. And I'm just going to hook these down or pin these down just using straight stitches. And because they're quite feathery, I'm going to put the straight stitches on right from the top. Straight down and off. And just like that. And they're quite a fine feathery feather, so I'm just going to lay these stitches in. And hopefully these will look feathery. This little piece here. And you can see I work either any which way. Sometimes I work from the top to the bottom and just as easily I work from the bottom to the top. And I've just dropped one of the feathers. So I'll just pick that up. 
I've got that other little piece hooked on now and so I've changed to the emerald just a single strand and I'm going to just put some little stitches going up here so you can see that the underneath is emerald all the way up and then I'm going to do a few little stitches going up into those feathers so it encourages it to look like feather separation I think that's as much as I need to do it just suggests the featheriness oops I'm going to finish on the top because I know that this is all going to be covered with more feathers. What I need to do is deal with the feathers here. So I'd like to cut out some separate ones and I was going to use this um, off the old skirt and I just need to look at my picture and sort of decide on a length and this is the ones I'm going to do these darker ones here so I'm going to cut some out and see what it looks like I had to alter a little bit I cut individual feathers first it wasn't working very well so I've actually cut both of the wings in their entirety and I'll embroider the separate feathers but I do still do like the the fact that it's on top of everything else I found this little bit of felted blue wool that was the perfect for that piece of um, feather and they're just lying in under there at the moment and then this little bit of pink velvet I sort of got a salmony colour on and I thought it was quite a good match for there and I'm just going to layer them up on there like that I'll put this wing in here it does mean I'm going to cover up this bit of embroidery it doesn't really matter to me at all I just layer up wherever I want feel as if I want to go and this needs to, I just need to get it right get them all in the right place Something like that. And then I've cut another shape to be the shoulders which will go over there. And once it's all embroidered I'm hoping that is going to look fine. So some of the all, some of the underneath one is still showing um, and I've got the lime green in my needle this one here just a single strand because I can see that the feather edges are all really pale and so I'll be putting the, put, putting it in with the feather edges all the way around I have actually got them placed it took me a little while to get them all sewn in it was I had to edit out the bit where all you could see were my hands so I'm going around now with long stitches because these are long feathers so if I do little short stitches here it'll make them look short and scrappy if I use long stitches then it's accentuating the fact that they're, they're the stitches that are um, the long feathers well, I'm just going to almost draw the outline of each feather just to get the fabric attached to the bird in the first place that's the first one there and there's another feather coming around here I shall just start to just draw it in with my needle and thread. Just have to keep pressing the fabric down onto the background so I'm not 
um, moving anything. Just the next feather going up. Again, long stitches. I'm doing the tiniest little back stitches here so I don't waste thread. So a nice long stitch in. I'm going to come back. I'm not doing a split stitch because I want that little jagged edge really to signify it's a feather. So I'm just going to come back by about a millimetre and a little bit out from the line and although it's not very noticeable, it's enough to just show that there is something there. And then there are more, there are more feathers on top of here, I think this way. And just keep looking, keep looking. I think this lime green is going to work quite well. Okay, I've got a feather coming down here. And all I'm doing, I'll show you, I'm sort of drawing the edges in of these feathers. So I've got one two, three, go, four going up, all with this lime green edge and then these big ones here. I'll just finish this thread off, finish it underneath because it's going to be hidden. And I'll draw the rest of these feathers on and maybe get that on the top as well. I'll get it all ready for the final embroidery on the body. So I'll start here, I'll start up the top with these lovely little blue edged lines. And I don't really mind where I start. going back by like not even a millimetre and then sometimes a back stitch but mainly it is just straight stitches coming in This is the nice part, well it's all nice really, but being able to just enhance the fabric and make it really look pretty. I'm just watching where I'm putting my threads. And then this mossy green will be able to shade in among it. So I haven't actually stitched this piece down. It's only the embroidery that's going to be holding it. Just the stitching. Just get these little, little feathers in. Sometimes this whole feather edge is showing and sometimes just little pieces. A dark shadow here, I'll just put it in with the blue. Oh, this is working. Sometimes I end up too near and then I can't quite see. I get so focused on the small stuff. It's only when I step back a bit that I can really see what's happening. Otherwise, sometimes it looks really disjointed. And I don't necessarily see the full, the full picture. It's 
what it feels a bit like here at the moment. It may just be that I need to get all of these little blue pieces in and the bit of shading or it might be, it might look all right. Or maybe, I think as well, as I get nearer to the top, I'm going to knock the amount of threads down to one. So I'm just doing, because all of this in the end got done with one thread. Right, I'm going to have a bit of a reassess and I'll come back and I've done a little bit more with one strand. The single strand has gone in much nicer, so I've done a little bit of work around the head. I just want to finish these bottom um, shoulder feathers and then I can finish off with the moss. And after that, I'll be able to carry on with the head or the legs, I think. And I'm just going to finish off putting these feather edges in. I may actually go across them a bit with the green to break them up a little, but uh, I need them in first. I'll just get some of these longer feathers. Another one there maybe. Just put one big long long feather in. And let's see, this is looking pretty decent. I've finished putting all the little blue pieces in with the single thread and I think it's looking quite nice so I'm going to carry on shading with this mossy green and sometimes, I'll just tighten my hoop up a bit, sometimes I'm going to actually go over the top of the blue thread to just break it up a bit but I definitely want uh, shading on some of these feathers and I'm just looking at the picture to see which direction the feathers are lying in so that I can put the appropriate lines. So as in here I'm going to take that down over the top of the blue and it'll just break the lines up a little bit. And not all of these need the shading on them. Oops. I'll just carry on laying these stitches in, sort of the shoulders where the, the where the shadow is. That's where I'm putting these this this mossy green colour. I'll just work my way up and down wherever I feel that I need to put a stitch in. It's quite dull here today, but it is dry. It was supposed to be pouring down again, but it has actually stayed dry so far. I'm hoping that when I go out, because I haven't been out in the garden for a few days because it's been so wet, Hoping when I go out that the poor roses have not been dashed to pieces. I am hoping to do a summer garden update. I imagine that there's lots of rose petals everywhere on the ground. I hope you can see that that's making a difference. Might not be obvious because the colour is very near to the background. But it is just enough to... Give him some contour. I'll finish off this shading and I'll get ready to do the eye and the beak. 
I've now finished the body as far as I feel I can go. There's just the feet to do with a branch eventually, which I'll probably do uh, last. But I want to get Joey's face in and I've found a piece of fabric that just was the right pieces of markings on it to cut the beak out. And I've cut the beak out except I couldn't get the whole point on. I've actually dabbed a little bit of white ink temps on there just to enhance what was a bit grey. I wanted it to be a bit paler. But the markings were just right so I've used that. And then I've cut out a piece of the tablecloth that I've actually stitching on for the eye. And I had marked the eye already. So if I go through there right in the middle, even though my knot's on the top, I can place the eye exactly. And so I'm going to start to do his face. What I'm using is one strand of this charcoal grey that I got in my tangle and then I've got two pieces of a pearl black cotton and I'll use them together. I thought I'd start with the grey. I did think about getting a button for his eye but it's a bit small. I don't have any of those flat little tiny buttons. They all got used up on the on the bird the bird stitchings. So I'm just going to put a few stitches in here just to get the sense of his pupil. And then I'll I'll not stitch it down too much before I've got the beak on so I know that is the placement is going to be correct. I wonder whether you can hear the rain. It's absolutely pouring down. I'm going to put his beak on here. Sort of, I feel as if, I think that's about right. I'll look at the picture. Sort of, maybe that's not quite right there. Although I can amend it with, I can amend it with sewing. So let's just see. His beak comes there. Actually, I think that's not too bad. I've got no point on the end of this thing here. The fabric just frayed away. I think I'm going to go for that. So I'll hold that down while I add stitches in to keep it in place. It may be that I just need to do some small embroidery with the black pearl cotton um, to enhance everything. I'm just going to carefully, and I'll need some green um, to put his feathers over the top of where his beak comes out. So his beak looks like it's actually, you know, part of him and not just stuck on the front. Which is what it actually is, it's just stuck on the front. I think... Just take some smallish stitches. I'm pleased I decided to do the initial bit with the dark grey. And then he has his top beak comes down in this really big point. So try I think it's better if I go from the background onto it because it's going to fray away otherwise. Try there, see if that looks too big. No, I think it looks about right. And I'll just go up around his beak with this charcoal. And then he sort of has this. This was just the right shape of mark for where his nostril is. So I'm going to just take my stitching across that and I will come back with the black. This will all help to get this stitch down. 
because this is his whole character coming out now. Can put the black on the end of his beak. This lovely sharp point. Might have made it a bit long, but oh, maybe not. So I need a ring. A yellow, I need a black pupil, a yellow ring, and then another. In fact, maybe I'll do it with the charcoal first. Actually, I sort of need to be looking through the magnifier. But it's be the magnifier is actually my light at the moment. I can't um, I can't stitch through the magnifier and film at the same time. But I actually this is quite small. And I think I'm just struggling to see it. I might just have to go and come back because I can't I can't actually see where my needle's coming up. Try a bit longer, otherwise I'll have to do it off camera. I don't want to particularly, but it's, uh, it's coming, uh, coming along. Plus, I know my fingers in the way, but I can't help it. It's too tiny. So I think I want to come from his beak. Keep the stitches small because it's his head. I'm not trying to make long feathers, they're all short feathers. So let's bring these stitches towards his eye and just keep angling them down and then I can outline the eye with this green these stitches are probably only about mm, that's less than a quarter of an inch that's for sure Just keep angling them round. And then take the stitches back towards the beak. And I can work on that little bit. I'm getting there definitely. It's uh, I feel I'm on the home stretch. So again I'll just wander this dark green around. I'll keep the stitches small. They're now down to about an eighth of an inch. I was thinking of uh, buying a frame for it but actually he's, he's in this hoop in quite a nice way. I might just um, frame it in this hoop. I'm going to give him a branch to sit on instead of um, the photograph has him on a perch. So I'm going to give him a branch because Joey had most of his time outside. He was a lucky bird in that way. He wasn't, he wasn't confined to a cage in the house. He only went in his cage to sleep. That's why people never used to believe that he that he was he belonged to, to where they saw him. They thought he must be escaped, because most most parrots wouldn't be out there in a garden. People would imagine they'd fly away. But as I said before, he knew where he lived. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on his 
foot that I can see and put a branch in and then I might just finish the whole thing off and come back when he is totally done. Well I'm pleased to say that Joey is finished and I think the painted background has worked very well because it's echoing his colours a bit and um, I've actually used some of my silver birch bark that I peeled so I've given him a, a birch bark branch to sit on and I've used the lenticels of the bark to stitch it on so that you can't really see the stitching very much and all in all I think it's come out really nicely and I'm hoping that Wendy will think he's lovely. I've actually cut the fabric off the back and I've gathered it in. There you can see the back of my stitching too and I'm going to cover this over with felt and just put my bow and arrow on in this in today's date and then it'll be ready to give to her. I'm only six months too late but at least she's getting it. Well, I really hope you enjoyed watching me bring Joey to life. I've actually finished him off now. It's got a nice felt back and I've just put sort of love from Marion because it was Wendy's Christmas present, or it is Wendy's Christmas present. But I think he's come out really lovely. And um, just so you realise how my videos may be a little bit longer than I've been trying to get them, but I stitched for over seven hours straight to get Joey finished. I can't be posting a video for seven hours. So that's how he got edited down so that you could see the highlights of how I got him together. But the intense painted background fabric is working so well. And there's no other way that I could have got that background other than painting it myself. The silver birch bark went really nicely on and I'm pleased that it's a piece of work that I have got off my list because I was feeling very guilty about Wendy not getting her Christmas present yet but no longer she'll be getting it as soon as I can get it to her so thanks for watching and definitely press me the like button if you like that and um, I'll see you next time that you visit me in Marion's world and I have no idea what my next project is there are lots vying for attention at the moment but I'll see you then. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching.